list of tools required for this installation. Work gloves, noise protection, safety glasses, hammer or mallet, quarter inch hex nut driver, thin rope, socket wrench with half inch socket. Upon receiving your Roberts Gordon heater, examine the markings on the outside of the cartons prior to installation to ensure proper model, rate, gas type, heat exchanger length, and material. There are two different types of heat exchanger packages. Each package is available in various lengths. The first package, called the core package, is supplied with all unitary heaters. For lengths 50 feet and longer, an extension package is supplied. This aluminized core package contains Roberts Gordon high efficiency reflectors. After properly identifying the packages, open each carton to familiarize yourself with the contents. It is recommended to open the burner carton first as the installation and operation manual is located inside. The manual provides a pictorial view of the components that will help you identify each item. You will also find how many of each item is included in each package. Remove all the contents from the burner carton. When removing the burner, confirm the information on the data plate is correct. The data plate lists the model of the burner, rate, gas type, altitude it is designed for, electrical information, serial number, along with the approval information. It is important to note that the CTH2D burner has external mounting studs. Other Roberts Gordon unitary heaters may have separate bolts to attach the burner to the burner tube. A 36 inch long flexible gas line is included in the burner carton for US customers. The gas line is sold separately for our Canadian customers so you will not find one inside the burner carton. The burner carton will also contain the burner tube gasket, hex nuts, lock washers, pipe nipple, and turbulator for select rates. While opening the core package, pull the cardboard just under the dashed line, being careful to avoid the large staples. The core package will contain the burner tube, straight tube section, hangers, support straps and wire forms, sheet metal screws, U-clips, S-hooks, a tube clamp package, vent adapter, reflectors, reflector end caps, coupling sleeve, and coupling drive bar. Prior to hanging the heater, identify hanging points that will properly support the weight of the heater and allow for proper spacing for hanger placement. Hanger placement is critical to allow for proper expansion and contraction of the heater. For this step, you will need a minimum of 3 16 inch chain, 3 8 inch threaded rod, or a gripple hanging system with a minimum working load of 75 pounds per hanging point. You will also need proper anchoring to secure the chain, threaded rod, or gripple system to the building structure. These items are not supplied by Robert Gordon. Refer to the suspension details in the installation manual for more information. The first hanger must be positioned within 4 inches of the burner. The second hanger should be located 7 feet 6 inches from the first hanger. All other hangers thereafter are spaced 10 feet apart. Properly securing uni strut or equivalent from the hanging points may be required to ensure proper spacing of the hangers. When hanging chain, it is recommended to use turnbuckles with S-hooks in place of standard S-hooks to maintain the minimum chain length and appropriate slope away from the burner. Tubing requires a downward slope of one half inch per 20 foot run. For heater lengths between 10 feet and 50 feet, the minimum length is 12 inches. 60 foot heaters require a minimum chain length of 18 inches. Minimum length of heaters 70 feet or above require 24 inches. For level reflectors, hook the S hooks through the middle hanging point on the hanger, keeping the optional 45 degree loop for each hanger facing the same direction. For 45 degree tiled reflectors, hook the S hooks through the 45 degree loop. After the hangers have been installed, slide the burner tube through the first two hangers. Position the tube so that the weld seam is located on the bottom of the burner tube. 
Remember to position the tube flange no more than four inches away from the first hanger. Install the tube clamp package onto hanger closest to the burner. The torque tension should be 120 inch pounds to properly secure the clamp package. This will maintain the correct orientation of the burner tube through the life cycle of the heater. Select models require a turbulator be installed inside of the heat exchanger. The turbulator should be installed inside of the section of heat exchanger pipe specified in the installation manual. This heater requires the turbulator to be installed in the second section of pipe. Assemble the turbulator sections by inserting the tabs into the punch slot as shown. Twist the turbulators downward to secure them to each other. To insert the turbulator inside of the tube, start by tying a small weight or bolt to the end of a long string. This will allow the string to drop through the pipe easily. Once the string is through, tie an S-hook to the string and attach it to the tab on the turbulator, or you may tie the string directly to the tab. Next, pull the string through the heat exchanger starting at the end of the burner tube. Stop pulling once the turbulator tab is even with the end of the tube. Bend the tab around the end of the heat exchanger to properly secure it. Next, attach the remaining straight tubes using the coupling sleeve and drive bar. The tab on the end of the coupling sleeve will be positioned under the guide rail to help hold the coupling in place while installing joining sections of tube. The joining tubes will be inserted into the coupling until it rests against the internal pins located inside the coupling to ensure each connecting tube is evenly inserted into the coupling. Partially assemble the coupling by wrapping the tab end of the coupling sleeve over the burner tube and sliding the tab underneath the guide rail. Position the coupling so the guide rail is at the 2 or 10 o'clock position. Insert the tube into the coupling until it rests against the pins. Slide the wide end of the drive bar onto the coupling guide rail and strike the bar with a hammer to tighten the coupling while being sure not to over tighten the coupling. The wide end of the slide bar should be within two inches past or before the end of the coupling sleeve as shown. Next is the reflector installation. To ensure proper expansion and contraction of the reflectors, a combination of U-clips and reflector supports are used. The positioning of the reflector supports and U-clips depend on the individual installation. High wind applications require the use of pop rivets or sheet metal screws in place of U-clips when installing reflector end caps or joint pieces. Begin by sliding the first reflector through the first two hangers. The first reflector should slide a minimum of two inches through the first hanger. Next, you will need to attach the reflector end cap. First, remove the pre-punch slot on the end cap to allow the end cap to be installed over the tube. Attach the reflector end cap on the end of the reflector between the burner tube flange and the first hanger by using U-clips. A minimum of four U-clips are required to properly secure the reflector end cap to the reflector. Position the end cap so that the flange is facing towards the burner. Slide the end cap flange into the four U-clips already installed onto the reflector. Next, install the reflector support strap and wire form in the middle of the first reflector by hooking each end of the support strap to the outer flanges of the reflector. Install the wire form by positioning the hook end of the wire form to the support strap. The opposite end will bend and pop into place. Insert sheet metal screws through the pre-drilled holes on each end of the reflector's support strap and tighten down to the reflector. Position the next reflector over or under the first reflector, always maintaining a minimum overlap of six inches. Install the third reflector over or under the second reflector, so the reflectors are stacked and not shingled. Repeat this process until all reflectors are in place. The overlap of the first and second reflector are referred to as slip overlap. It is important to note that every third overlap is considered a slip overlap. If the slip overlap falls inside of a hanger, no support strap is required. The use of a reflector support strap with loose screws is required if the slip overlap does not fall inside of a hanger. 
This will allow the reflector to expand and contract during operation. The remaining reflector joints are referred to as non-slip overlaps and can be secured using reflector support straps and wire form with tight screws. Or if a non-slip overlap falls inside of a hanger, two U-clips or sheet metal screws must be installed. When installing the burner, the indicator light or the flame viewer window on some models must be facing downward for proper orientation. Insert the burner tube gasket onto the protruding mounting studs on the burner. Then align the protruding mounting studs with the pre-drilled holes on the burner flange. Position the burner onto the burner tube by inserting the mounting studs through the holes on the burner tube flange. While balancing the burner in place, slide the lock washers onto the bolt studs followed by screwing on the hex nuts. Tighten each nut to 120 inch pounds to ensure the burner is securely installed. You are now ready to connect your vent pipe. Connect the single wall vent pipe to the end of the heat exchanger via the vent adapter by sliding the vent adapter over the heat exchanger and vent pipe. Tighten the two set screws on top of the vent adapter to secure the vent pipe to the heat exchanger. We recommend sealing all vent seams with high temperature silicone to prevent possible condensation leakage. Alternatively, the burner can be attached to the burner tube on the ground prior to installing the tubes into the hangers. This method would require securing the first hanger no more than four inches away from the burner tube flange with the tube clamp package as described in a previous step. Secure the burner head onto the burner tube and lift the burner tube with the installed burner head, hanger, and clamp package and second hanger and attach both hangers to the S-hooks. Proceed with the rest of the installation as previously described. This concludes our installation instructions. If you require additional support, please contact your local Roberts Gordon representative or Roberts Gordon at 1-800-828 7450 or online at www.robertsgordon.com Work must be performed by a qualified contractor.